So let's say you just spent all this time trying to figure out how to make a video for somebody. And after you've made that video, you want to put a soundtrack to it, but the video is too long. So in order to add a soundtrack to that video in a way, where you don't just uh, fade the song out in the middle, maybe you get something that's more bookended and tailored to the song, what do you do? Well, this is why we're going to go over um, GarageBand in this set of tutorials. Because GarageBand is an uh, audio editing suite which will give you the tools you need to splice something down to exactly the size you need it. So, without further ado... Alright, so in this first part of the GarageBand tutorial series, I'm going to talk to you about um, basically where things are in GarageBand. Where do you look if you need to make a new track? Where do you look if you need to copy something? Where do you look if you need to pay something? Just the basics. What's the logic of the program? So um, that's what you're going to find in the minutes that follow. All right, so welcome to my GarageBand uh, window. You can see uh, a bunch of stuff here. I basically opened up a, a new project uh, called Demo One, and this is what came up. Um, there was a little keyboard, but I exited it out, so I wouldn't have to deal with it. Uh, I always like to get rid of those little goodies that they give you with the program. So anyways, um, in this, this demo, I'm going to kind of go over importing a song into GarageBand, splicing it, uh, doing a crossfade, and doing a voiceover in the thing. So I'm going to show you how to do all those things, but I'll also show you how to kind of navigate the logic of the windows a little. So the first thing to, to know about GarageBand is if you click on it, oh, there's the keyboard, uh, just X out of it, get rid of it, you don't need it. Um, these these little things up here, all the drop-down menus are very important, and so is the right-click because these are the main ways that you're going to navigate through the program. For instance, if I click here, you're going to see all the stuff for about GarageBand. You probably won't use those, but in File, you can open New, open Recent, um, Track, you can add new tracks, delete tracks, see, so easy, just hit New. Um, or if you're like me and you don't like these fancy tracks they give you, just go to new basic track and give you a nice little speaker looking thing, track with no effects. Um, all sorts of things. You could, should probably turn off the metronome. That's not going to be productive when you're recording. It's going to make a little clicking sound. You don't want that. I also like to take snap to grid off because I think that that um, takes a little of the precision that you might want out of GarageBand. Uh, so and that's, those things are under control, metronome and snap to grid. And so I like to take those out. Um, share, that's how you'll export it eventually. Window, we can bring that keyboard back if you want. We can get rid of it. And then help. So it's a pretty simple layout. So then some other things to note as you're going through GarageBand are, um, first I'm going to get rid of this piano track because I, I hate all the prefab tracks. Just delete it. It's gone. Now we've got this nice no effects track. Um, so just understanding the sort of layout, this is the record button. If I hit this, the track is going to um, either arm record or not arm record. So if it's armed, it will record and you can see my voice coming up here. Otherwise it won't record. And if it's armed, you can hit this big record button right here and then it's going to start recording. And if I hit space, it'll stop recording. And if I hit rewind and play, and then it's going to start recording, and if I hit space, and of course, you can always go after you've done that, undo, take away things. So that's how you arm your recording thing. Uh, this is the mute button. This will make a track get quiet so you won't hear it if you toggle it. And this is a solo button. It's kind of the opposite of a mute. Uh, solo basically lets you hear only the track that you solo. Uh, this is a lock button. Locks it, prevents changes, sort of typical stuff. And then here are two really interesting things. This is the volume slider. This helps you set the track volume. And this is the pen, whether it comes through the left speaker or the right speaker. So you can basically uh, decide where your track is going to play back in a two-dimensional space, uh, I guess a stereo space, left or right. And so if you're working with several tracks, you can put some on the right, some on the left, some in the center. And that's really how things get mixed, ultimately, when people do uh, big mixing jobs. So anyways, uh, the only other thing about this that I really want to show you is that if you click this down carrot right here, you're going to get this opportunity 
to go through either track volume or track pan, these two things, but you can set them as automation. So um, for instance, it's set to track volume right now. And so now I can tell it to take a dive and change the volume in these various ways. And that's an important thing if you want to set it so that uh, maybe something, your track gets quieter while maybe someone speaks. I'll go over all of that later. But that's how you get it. It's this little carrot right here and it will hide. And if you want to get rid of that, you just slide it over the stuff and it will go away. Really easy stuff. So other stuff that's going on is you have this option to have a sort of bottom screen. Uh, that's create a new track, but I think it's this. We'll pull up this sort of close edit of the audio region. Um, we might use that. It depends on my mood and how well I'm doing with my, my edits today. Um, of course, record, play, rewind, fast forward, loop, and go back to beginning. Master volume. Um, and you can also see the master volume tracks, their volumes will come over here. And then you've got your sort of measures, bar, beats thing. Uh, usually I like to trim this to hours, minutes, seconds, because uh, I think they're the most useful things. But you see there's a bunch of goodies. You've even got a tuner if you want to tune your guitar or something like that. Uh, this are loops, we're not going to use those. And this opens up an effects panel where you can treat your tracks with certain effects. Uh, we might get into that uh, later, but just know that's there. When you add this stuff, if you go to um, Real Instrument and Edit, you can plop effects onto the instrument, make it sound cool and interesting. Uh, for instance, uh, if I pop down, get myself talking again, take it back to the start. Yo! So, if I rewind, listen to that. Yo! Right, sounds cool, but if I open up this menu, and then I go, and I click here to add an effect, I can add like, uh, I don't know, a track reverb, which is just basically saying, I want it to act like I'm in a different room, and I can go here and I can make it sound like I'm in, I don't know, uh, deep space, concert hall, anything I want. Uh, see what's cool arena that sounds cool so and now if I play back with the arena Yo. it sounds like I'm in some sort of space arena or something and you can take that off um, get rid of it do whatever you need to do with your track but that's how you add effects to your tracks and of course I'll probably delete this this little sucker right here edit cut and now it's gone all right, so that's kind of what's going on in GarageBand. All right, so now that you know how to find anything, please go to the next tutorial if you want to know how to start splicing things and importing things into GarageBand. Thanks for watching.